Welcome to the George's FTTV YouTube channel. Today we have the round one review for Supercoach 2024 and a lot to go over today. A lot of players went uh, 150 plus, had or 130 plus, didn't have all of them, had some of them, which is fine, but yeah, 2,197 and rank 16k. So rank is whatever. I thought it'd be a little bit higher than that, to be honest, but yeah, if you had like a Luke Ryan or Sarong, I think the Frio game at the end there was not kind for me, but most of the other, most of the rest or the rest of the round was was pretty good for me. So um, I guess happy with that. You just, at this point, you want to have a team that's competitive and I think we have that, but we'll need a boost and there's a few things that we, we have wrong and... I think a lot of the content creator community, like a lot of us have like a Nick Martin, um, which I'm not sure how highly owned he is like elsewhere, but that was, that hurt. Zach Fisher hurt after, uh, yeah, whatever, baited by preseason game. And uh, it's hard as well. Like Tom Green looks unbelievable. He has two buys though. So in a tough spot, do you get him before the rise? Do you get him after? Do you just let it go? You, do you start him? So I started and fortunately worked out, uh, but we'll see how we go. So yeah, um, the housekeeping, I guess, uh, feel free to join our Discord. Link is in the description. So lots of uh, live chat there, voice chat every now and then after after game sometimes if you want to um, talk to other people. Uh, obviously, it's all AFL now, but off-season we have other sports as well. So, uh, you know, trade ideas, bounce ideas off each other, bring some info, whatever, whatever. So, so if you like that community aspect, that might be for you. So this is how we did this week. Um, so a few late changes were, so Marty Hall was named and we know he's made, I think he's made 250K plus in the past. Many years ago, did the two ACLs and delisted, now back on Melbourne's list and played good. Thought he was good. Uh, maybe a few little things for him to improve on, but uh, looked good. Um, intercept marks were there. Started slow, but yeah, the intercept started to come, and that's his specialty. And then Green, Butters, and Dawson were the three I was choosing between. I didn't have the money for Dawson, so it was Green or Butters. And because of the Butters, uh, Butters ankle issue, I went for Thomas Green. So can't complain too much there. Um... And those were the late changes. Everything else stayed the same. Uh, Captain Dacos, but... Yeah, we'll go through the team, some trade scenarios, and look at some of the top scorers today. Um, yeah, probably the highlight of the weekend. I think Isaac Heaney was good to watch. I think a lot of people... I think he's 25% owned, so it is... It's not low, but it's not everyone. So I think he's a high priority. Um, I would be getting him in, especially with his West Coast and Richmond, and I think it's Essendon as well. But that was good fun. And Matt Crouch going well. Uh, Sam Berry uh, benched over Sanders, lost points. But if you look at defense, you win in one. You win in the defense, you lose in the midfield. It is what it is. It evens out. So uh, first of all, we have the uh, the defense. Now, I don't have Kipkis here. You're probably thinking, you lucky prick. And yep, that's, that is exactly right. Very lucky because I had Kipkis all the preseason. But Marty Hall came in and I needed an excuse to fit Tom Green in or that pay up for that M2 slot. And Hall came in and that answered, that, that, answered the, that question for me to get the money for M2. So he went Kipkis down to Hall and that's luckily worked out. But Dacos VC, yeah, here's the buy. Might have Finn coming up, but who cares? Teams might even not even tag him. I don't think he's playing the best at the moment, but he's scoring. Like, he's playing well, but it's, I feel like he's got another gear. Uh, Sheezle was excellent. Uh, did all the great defensive stuff too. Like, he was intercepting, coming off his man, and did all the rebounding. He was great. Now, I did watch basically every game, or bits and pieces of, I think, the Saturday night, because there were two games on. But this was the one game I didn't watch, the Fremantle game. And yeah, that was very bad because no Fife, no Jackson, no Luke Ryan and no Sarong. So good job if you picked any of those guys. 
But Young had, I think, 11 clangers or something like that. That is not acceptable. We will keep backing him in for the time being, uh, but 70 is not good. It's not what we want. And it's funny, it's, you look at the team and the players that have done it in the past all fired, like Heaney's done it in the past. Flanders, I guess, when he's got the opportunity, has you know, these guys, except for Nick, Nick Martin. Young's done it for like four weeks, so we forgive. But it yeah, just goes to show you how important the proven element is. Um, wines, we'll get to wines. But yeah, 70's not great when you've got Luke Ryan and Houston going nuts and they're clear. I would say they're top six defenders. So yeah, I don't really have much to comment other than that's disappointing, but you'd think he'd bounce back. I did hear a bit of half-back time. So if I see more half... Well, if I watch next week and I see more half-back time, I won't hesitate to punt him. But we'll monitor. So yeah, we'll see how we go. Zach Williams. I was watching Williams and in the practice game... No, no sorry. In the VFL game, he ran out of gas. He didn't run out the game well. In round one, he scored nothing in the fourth quarter. He ran out of gas and, sorry, in round that was round zero. And now it's round one. He was on his haunches in the third quarter and scored nothing after that. Maybe three points after that. So, uh, like, it's whatever. He's going to keep making money. What's He's got the buy this week, but break even of four. He'll make some money. He's got good job security. And I don't think he's a sub risk. I mean, if he keeps guessing out, they might, but... At the moment, I think we'll just hold on Zach Williams. But yeah, it's very whatever. And like it's to me, it looks like he's quite a way off being that being able to run out four quarters when he can basically barely run out three at the moment. So yeah, he'll be better for the run, but how long are we gonna wait? And I'm pretty impatient. So I think another thing that hurt him is close games and you're not scoring the fourth quarter, you're gonna get scaled down. So if that doesn't happen, it's probably 65-70. So we'll keep holding. But I think we'll probably ditch him earlier than what we anticipated. Uh, Hor and House were, were fantastic. So these are the defender rookies to get. They're probably the top two. And then third is probably Caulfield. And then fourth, I guess, is Mass if you count him. And Toby Pink and Dean are there. Like, not really necessary, but they're there if you need them. But yeah, both of them were, were pretty good. Both got involved a little bit, and we like that. Uh, I think Hoare played on a few different opponents, I think. I think he was on maybe Lob once or twice, but not too fast. I think big and small, so I think he's fine. Zach Reed injured, hamstring. How long uh, do you hold him? If there's better opportunities out there, I think you just go for it, especially if it's getting you some points on field. And I'll probably ditch Zach Reed. Uh, I think he's fine to hold. He'll come back and make money. But uh, his body is just the worst. And it's fortunate because I thought about fielding him. And I remember, I think it was on Bomber Blitz. I looked it up. They spotted him training away from the main group uh, leading into round one. And he was like with a trainer on like a separate oval. And that was a bit of a red flag. And... That's when I said, okay, I'll just bench him. And lo and behold, he does a hammy or hamstring awareness. So you do wonder if he had an issue leading into round one. And yeah, he's unfieldable. He's too injury prone. So he can hold, he's not a pressing issue, but he is an issue. And we'll get a timeline on the hamstring. So if it's a few weeks and I can get Massimo, I'll flick him for, but you know, it might be a long-term hold. If, if you want to do that, I think that's fine. Because he basically has to play. Like, he's their high pick and, yeah, he's a good player. Uh, Coffield 49 didn't get involved enough. Um, yeah, whatever. Like, he can stay at uh, D8. Now, the midfield. Midfield was okay. I, th I think you give the midfield a tick. Obviously, there's a massive cross for Martin and a cross for Sanders. Uh, we'll get to Bevo in a second, but Bond 126, uh, probably probably lucky to get that. Does get all the like the contested knock-ons. We saw a lot of that, but uh, he looked really tired, and it was hot out there. This can happen in round one, so 
Um, yeah, I'm taking the 126 and running basically. So he looks fine. He'll be a top eight mid. It's interesting to see the next gen, like the green, Srong, Anderson, Rao, Butters. Like these guys are all taken over basically. So they look like the, the new wave of the midfield. And we'll see where like Petrarca, where, where Oliver, Dorset, I'm not too sure on, like Laird. We'll see where these guys that have been good for us for a while now, we'll see where they land and how far, you know, do we just see these guys just, you know, are they a tier above these new guys? But we'll find out. It's only one game so far. So yeah, Bont was fine. And Tom Green, yeah, enormous 152. I mean, GWS is so good. And there's no one really, a bit like Steel. Yes, there's Cogs and Kelly there, but there's no real fourth guy that's disrupting anything. Like three mental mids might be like, you know, like uh, Fife, Brayshaw and... Sarong did well, and then you have the fourth, or one of the four, Young, does poorly. You look at Gold Coast, they all went nuts, but this can kind of happen when you have high scorers in the midfield, whereas GWS, it'll be Green, Cogs, Kelly. I mean, Ward will come in, have his days every now and then, but he's injured. Like, O'Halloran's not a massive scorer. Finn Callahan's not a massive scorer yet, so, yeah, he's just on probably the best team in the league and has the best role when he's best contested ball winner and he's got a really strong outside game too so you put all that together and it's a nasty combination so uh, like Tom Green happy we started but we're going to cop it in round three Steel was good uh, yeah he's got the, there's no midfielders they don't have any crouches underdone Crouch probably took away from him a bit with taking tackles away uh, a few years ago or the last two years and you know Ross I think was subbed they got kids, they got like Philippu in there. Like who else do they throw in there? So happy with Steel. There's no one really here taking taking points off him and he looks fit full preseason. So I hope he's a keeper for us and we'll see where he lands too. I'm hoping for 110 from him. and I'll be happy with that at M8, but we'll see. Nick Martin, what a flop. Oh my God. Um... I don't think he has the, the skill set to play this role. More specifically, he has the work rate. I don't think he has the defensive capabilities, although I don't think that's massive in this role, but the kicking is an issue, and it was an issue when I was reading uh, training reports early in the preseason when Nick Martin made this move. It was He was turning it over a fair bit. Like He looks good, but he's turning it over. Turned it over a bit in the practice game, and he's turned it over a lot. Um, again, now you could back him in, but with midfielders going absolutely nuts and opportunities everywhere, if you have an excuse to get rid of someone for these opportunities, which look pretty obvious, like a Jack Billings, I think is a negative five break even, and I'll, that 11 will drop off and he's just going to make so much money. Um, I don't know, maybe you like a Sarong or a Rao, you want to go up, that's fine. I mean, they're going to be, like, their price will be out of control for at least probably the first few weeks. So, um, yeah, it depends what, like, I don't have McKercher, for God's sake. So someone has to go in this midfield. So I think um, one of Martin or Fisher will go this week and the other will go the week after. It's just hopefully we hold the right one, get a good score next week. Um, but, yeah, really disappointing from Nick Martin. Uh, Matty Crouch, 114. So a bit of the, the older guys, like, are still... Wines, Crouch, Bont, these guys are like 28 plus and I maybe should have gone a bit more next gen. But yeah, Crouch 114, he was very good. Tog was a bit low as expected, 72%. That will hold him back. I think we want 105 plus from him and he can do that. But he played very well and it might be hurting Dawson. So uh, yeah, happy with that. And what's his average, uh, sorry, what's his break even? 70, so he should make a bit of money. If he can hover at the high 500s, if he can just get there till the buy, and then we flip him for someone who's had their buy, I think we'll be happy. Ollie Wines, 94. This was a weird one. Again, it's one of those games that in Adelaide today was really hot. I think it was 30 odd degrees. No tackles. So, also, I think the CBAs and the TOG, I haven't seen the CBAs yet. 
but I know the tog was low. So this is one where I'm happy to hold for the time being. Not a high priority, but sort of a waste of time pick because if the tog is going to be low and the CBAs aren't 70 plus at least, then I'll probably get out of it. Uh, just because like the the fixture's good and, and whatever. He looks okay. A lot of contested handballs. The DT score was terrible. It's like 70, I think. Um, so he's capable of, of just, you're fine to hold him, but yeah, I want to see the CBAs and the TOG next week. And if they're not good, we'll look at other opportunities. Riley Sanders subbed in his debut game. Pretty disgraceful from Bevo. Not surprised, but I know he had a few clangers and he said that subbing him was not part of that but when you've got McNeil doing nothing Vandermeer not doing a lot like seriously and Sanders showed that he can run out a game pretty well he did in the practice game so um you don't do that to a kid in his first game that's like I can't even put it into words how stupid that was and I guess Bevo doesn't really surprise us anymore um but that actually did surprise me actually because that was just incredibly like couldn't believe it he talked him up that much and yeah, he, he was starting to get into the game. He was turning it over, but he was starting to get into the game a bit more. So like really pathetic decision and he's very frustrating, Bevo, um, but it is what it is. Builded Roberts, 69, just the one kick in, had five the week before, yeah, whatever happens. Sam Berry we picked, this should have been McKercher and obviously McKercher was a dumb fade and I do apologize because I am a, I don't know if influence is the right word, but I have presence in the community on Twitter and stuff and on here. And you might see, oh, McKercher's not, uh, George is not picking McKercher, maybe. Like, obviously you want him, but if I need money, maybe I just cut McKercher. That was really, like, very, very dumb. Um, the way McKercher was playing was really hard to watch as a non-owner because it was all junk. Like, he used it well, hit out the right targets, but it was... Backwards hand passes, it was kick to kick, it was infuriating to watch. And I can't watch that for another week, especially under the deck at Marvel this week. There's no way I sit through that. No chance. So McCurcher will come in this week. Bad mistake. Um Barry nearly matched him. Barry was okay, dropped a mark at the end. Probably could have got ninety plus if he took that mark inside fifty. Um I think he got a clanger for that, but he Probably didn't accumulate as much as I liked, and it was wet, which should have been perfect for Barry. So, uh, I think we'll just hang on to him. Like, I know 80 is like not bad, but there's just so much, so many good picks out there. And this isn't where we shouldn't have allocated, this is not where we should have allocated our money. But I think it was promising. Like, he ran out of the game really well. I think his knee was heavily strapped. I don't know why. I think we'll field him next week over Sanders and Roberts, I think coming out he's at he'll be at home at Adelaide Oval and yeah we'll see how he goes I thought he was okay I think it like if you have him you're like yeah it was okay if you don't have him you're like yeah, I'm not even gonna look there so that's fine Carol was solid CBAs were decent uh, depends if Walsh comes back I don't know what will happen to Carol hopefully he doesn't move to sub Jai Clark 13 similar to Reed these guys can make money if you just hang on to them might take a bit more time but when you don't have McKercher and you have a player with 60 tog and scoring 10 or 13 then you're gone so it is what it is but he's fine to hold he's not a pressing issue but there's yeah there's a lot of good rookies out there rock line we didn't captain we captain Dacos but uh, Gorn bounced back. I yeah, read an article about Gorn this week, said he was disappointed with his performance. Heat got to him a little bit. And uh, he was excited to carry the load of the ruck this year, and he's ready to bounce back. And as soon as I read that, I thought there's no chance I'm, I'm fading Gorn. So lucky we read that article because I did think about it because he did look a bit sore, but just had an off night. And we've seen this so many times with Gorn. Round one, like things go wrong, cops and knock, you know, doesn't run out the game well looks gassed round two okay uh sorry about last week but now next opponent is gonna is gonna die so 162 is great from him 
Grundy, I couldn't believe what I was watching. He he was so looked so motivated and hard working against Born point to prove and then uh round two I'll just I'll just do cardio for the game. Gave away some dumb freeze. Inexcusable. Uh SCG is good for him. Smaller ground. He likes tackles and follow up work and less so around the ground stuff like the old Grundy. That's what I see him as anyway. So this is a better matchup. So he's definitely not a trade this week. Certainly not. And if you're trading him, the only reason why I'd consider trading is because on his buy, he shares with Heaney and Dacos. He has to go on his buy because he's not a keeper. Um, but do you want to pay 700 for English? No chance. Oh, no way you're paying 700 for English. Do you want to pay for Rowan? He's 640. I mean, it's an okay price for Rowan. A bit expensive, but... Do you want English? So, or do you just go to Cherry? So, because Cherry's at the moment better points per uh, points per dollar. So I think Grundy we probably hold until he's buy, and hopefully he makes a bit of money and uh, Rowan or English come down a bit, and we'll go from there. We went Livingston. Uh, didn't I thought about going for Nank, but we couldn't afford it. I dare say we we would have captained Bont and lost nine points. So. Yeah, I think Nank in this spot would have been fine, but what will end up happening is when, not Nank, when Naismith comes, we'll probably hold Livingston and downgrade, use uh, Naismith as a downgrade option. So we'll keep Livingston for the year. Uh, Flanders was great, 128. And he's a, he's another one, like if you have green, you go Flanders, but you know the buys were kind of tricky for us this year, but uh, it's sort of where you got to pick the best players, even if you, you cop it, but you just pick the players you want that, that will go up in price. So happy with his game. Henny was un unbelievable. So you got to remember, like, he's not going to do this every week. There are times in the year where he will look sore. It happens every year. But I think you jump on. I think his break even is, is it negative? Can't read that. Negative 12? Yeah, negative 12. And he's got... A dream fixture so I would get him in Fisher honestly pathetic uh, I knew he couldn't play I don't know what the role was he was on like a key forward at one point um, under the deck at Marvel he will be better he's capable of good scores so I think I'll hold this week but 90% chance he's gone next week and he's significant injury risk too so I think we just picked him out of fear of just like the North Melbourne halfbacks um, there's a chance he comes good because he's shown he's capable but he's just like when there's actual pressure on he just turns it over like his first few kicks he hit Giants players lace out and just rolled your eyes thinking why did I pick this guy you knew he was no good but the role was fantastic so well, it was wasn't as good this game, but we'll see. Uh, James Jordan was, was solid. Don't notice him much, but a few tackles. And yeah, I think the fixture coming up is good, so we'll hold him. Harley Reid was okay. Contested stuff was good. Outside game, not really there just yet. Sexton halfback, I think we'll just keep fielding him. That's fine. And Wilson Cadman looks good, but we don't have Dempsey. So we'll have to figure something out there. Uh, Cadman will make some money. I do worry that like this will stagnate at some point. Uh, West Coast this week, which is which is decent, has the buy, and then Gold Coast, Adelaide Hills. I think it's a big round. So that is that. So trades for this week. I think we'll do. Um, so Billings has to. Okay, let's look at break evens. Who has low break even? How's we have? So Tom Berry, I think we're going to skip him. 160k and we don't really have... Like he's good, but he scored 40 DT in the first game. And like he's definitely a fine trade-in. Like yeah, he's going to make heaps of money. 100 in his system. So fine trade-in. But the buy is bad and I think I'd rather Dempsey. So I will be skipping Berry. We have these guys, which is fantastic. I've thought about Hogan, but it just stuffs everything up because he has the buy and probably got to flick him at some point. So 
I wouldn't be surprised if he can do 90 plus and like be a keeper. Um, but his scoring last year was so up and down. There's too many like 50s and stuff in there. But the Giants look good. He looks good. I think he's one you needed to start. Um, Lions is interesting. Um, what did he score? Let's say what he scored. 81. 181. So 100 and then 81 last week. 106 and 81. Um, average 94, 250k. It was a decent starting pick. I did think about it, but I thought, well, what's his sub risk? Is he a sub risk? What's his, yeah, what's going to happen there? We didn't go there. And yeah, if you did, you'd be happy. You got a good score this week. I just don't see how I get him in. Like, mid spots are too precious, and I think I'll take McKercher over him. Because McKercher will hold down our defense after round six. So, I think it's just one we let through. And if you pick him, it's like sneaky pod for you, and you're happy if he's not dropped. But I think Dev scored like 10 today. So, we'll see what happens when Neil comes back. But I think I'll just let that one go. Dean, I'm not going to worry about. Dempsey will get in. Massimo. Yeah. He looks good. He's sweeping in defense a little bit, but he's more wing and up the ground. And, you know, 29 touches, 13 contested is pretty good. Look, he could drop a poor score, but I think a ton in the preseason, 120 today. I think I'll go there. I'm not sure. Campbell will skip. Windsor will skip. He was subbed. Ware will skip. Sharp, what did he score? 70. So with Sharp, I thought he was planned to be sub. And then Omira was a late out, so I didn't watch him play, but 70, you'd be happy with that. And I think we got Carroll there, so I think we'll let that go, but you'd be happy with Sharp. Aaron Mackay. This is actually a decent play. North have no key defenders. Fremantle just had Oscar McDonald go down. I don't think they have much. Adelaide have Borlais and Butts, so. Hmm. It's a sneaky play. I don't think there's worse plays. I think I can't handle any key forwards, so I'll skip it, but. Yeah, Harvey Thomas, whatever. Hal Warner. I think he got injured. Um, Ball looks good. Kirch, uh, yeah, obviously, like one game for a lot of these guys. It's more the guys that have played two games. So the players will get in. I think we'll get rid of Martin first because he's got more cash on his head and it will enable us. Okay, so Jack Billings has to come in. I think there's a chance he's like our F6 for the year because he's done 90 or 85. I don't know why I type that. He's done 85 to 90 in the past. He looks good. Um, I think we'll lock that one in. It could be Fisher out for Billings. I'm not sure. Um, who do we bench this week? What are the matchups? Oh, Harley Reid versus GWS. I think we maybe let him bench. On the bench, I think. Oh, everyone's on the website, so it's a bit slow at the moment. Um, I think we feel Barry here. Oh, hang on. And then what do we do now? Well, we can do... Like, we could actually go Fisher to... Did we guess Sarong? Oh, we actually could. And we could grab Dempsey. Um, But then we don't have McKercher, so I don't know how we get him in next week. I think we just hold Fisher for one. Hopefully he can do something good at Marvel. Probably still trade him if he does well, but still got Ollie to trade if we need to, but I'll hold Ollie. I think he'll be better for it. Um get rid of Reed, get rid of Clark. Yeah, again, these two are probably fine to hold, but when you don't have bloody McCurch, I don't think you really have much choice. Yeah, it's a disgusting role. Um I don't know if Mass is worth it or not. 
that's kind of what I'm thinking this week. Maybe it's more points going for the premium. I'll try and figure that one out. But at this stage, that's what I'm thinking. And then McCurch, I think bench Sanders. And then maybe bench Harley Reid, I guess, against tough Giants team. I think you can field Reid. That's fine. It's just a bit of a weird one. Uh, Cadman's not on his bye, is he? So we can loop Caulfield probably. I don't think that's going to matter. So who drops off this week? Um, yeah, best 18. Maybe we go for the premium. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't have a clue how to get Sarong next week. Fisher and Wines, I guess. Or Rundy to Cherry. Say so have 180k. Put that on Fisher. It's not enough. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Don't know. We'll try and map it out, but um, but yeah, I think yeah, bench Harley Reid. But who drops off? Probably one, two, uh, maybe three Sexton, then maybe like a Roberts or Berry, maybe Grundy. So maybe we go for the premium. Not sure. We'll figure something out, but. I think we'll leave it at that. So thank you for watching. Uh, let me know how you went and all that. It's a tough one. If you haven't had the best week, um, just boost and, and fix things up and go from there. Try to make the right decision. So yeah, let me know who you're getting in this week and yeah, hopefully figure something out. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.